الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد تب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم اللهم يا وهاب صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد فاتح الأبواب وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم All praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator, our sustainer and the greatest of salutations be upon the beloved of Allah Sayyidina wa Mawlana Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Upon his family, upon his companions and upon our pious predecessors, Amin. Alhamdulillah, it is by the grace, the mercy, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he jalla wa ala once again has given us this opportunity of presenting ourselves tonight for this majlis of zikr, salawat and ilam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower upon us his divine mercy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam on the day of resurrection. Ameen ya Rabbana ya Rabbal Alameen. Alhamdulillah, tonight is night three with regards to the topic Dala'ilun Nubuwa, the proofs of the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We spoke with regards to an intro and thereafter we proceeded to the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which serves as a proof with regards to his Nubuwa. Tonight, inshallah, we will be discussing prophecies made by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam as a sign of his nubuwa, a sign, a testimony that he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was upon haqq and that the deen that we follow is a deen of haqq. So inshallah, for the next few minutes, we discuss the prophecies made by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and the majority of the prophecies that I will cover is with regards to prophecies made with regards to the end of times. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam made these prophecies not for his time, but for the time to come. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make firm in our hearts love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to emulate the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and conviction that the deen that we are following is the deen of haqq. Ameen ya Rabbana ya Rabbal Alameen. With regards to the prophecies made by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Qadi Iyad radiyallahu ta'ala in his ashifa states about this genre of hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave prophecies and he said that this genre of hadith is a bottomless ocean. It is a bottomless ocean. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made certain prophecies 1400 years ago. And those prophecies, the explanation of those hadith and the prophecies made by the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is only now beginning to be answered in our time, 1400 years later. So the utterances of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he prophesied about certain events is a bottomless ocean. And thereafter, Qadi Iyad radiyallahu ta'ala 
said all of these evidences, all of these prophecies point to one thing. And that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was made privy to ilmul ghaib. Was granted this by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted to the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knowledge of the unseen. Because all of this what we are going to be discussing now is from the unseen and this is knowledge bestowed upon him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bestow his knowledge and these types of knowledge upon who he desires jalla wa ala subhanahu wa ta'ala who he chooses the better word who he chooses to bestow this gift upon no one can stop Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam with regards to ilmul ghaib. And all of this is part of ilmul ghaib. The first prophecy that we will discuss tonight is Um Haram radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Um Haram bint Milhan, she heard one day Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam say that the first army from my nation the first army from my nation to ride the sea have guaranteed for themselves Jannah. So Um Haram bint Malhan radiyallahu ta'ala anha she heard this narration from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the first army from my ummah to ride on the sea have guaranteed themselves paradise, Jannah or kama qala al-habib al-mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Um Haram bint Malhan said Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam will I be amongst them? will I be amongst them? She is asking about something which is going to happen. Which is going to happen. In fact, this did not even happen in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nor in the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and Umar for that matter. It happened way after. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, will I be amongst them? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, You will be amongst them. You will be amongst them. And she said, she said, that I was from the first army of this ummah to march in a battle to the city of Caesar. Which is the city of Caesar? Constantinople, which is present day Istanbul. And Um Haram bint Milhan, a prophecy made by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, came through and she was in that army. And because she was in that army, Jannah was guaranteed for her. This is a sign regarding the Nubuwa of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The difference, the difference between Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making a prophecy and other individuals uh, making prophecies, for example, Nostradamus and so forth, other, you know, uh, scholars and other individuals, is that every single prophecy, every single prophecy made by the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came through or will come through with regards to rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam every single prophecy of his came through and will come through in the future when he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam prophesied with regards to the end of times and the signs of the end of times and the sahaba fraternity they witnessed first hand the prophecies made by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. For example, it was common 
it was common in the time of the messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam for rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to address his companions regarding their inner thoughts their inner thoughts today we claim similarity to the habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was bestowed with such ilm by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to even claim similarity with him is ignorance sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam this is knowledge bestowed upon him al mukhtar al mustafa the chosen one by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example wabisa ibn ma'bad radiyallahu ta'ala narrated i came to rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and before i can open my mouth rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to this individual you came to ask me about righteousness and sin you came to ask me about righteousness and sin rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was able to deduce their inner thoughts and tell them what they were thinking in their hearts and with regard to this questions uh, this question asked by sayyidina wa maulana wabisa ibn ma'bad that you came to ask me about righteousness and sin so rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took the, his hand he tapped the chest of wabisa and he said consult your heart consult your heart consult your heart sin is what discomforts your soul and wavers in your chest even if the people continue to advise you otherwise and he gave him advice he gave him nasiha this is rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam basically preempting the questioner that before he can even ask he a question rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him these are your questions that you want to ask from me this is the greatness of the messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam then sayyidina huzaifa ibn yaman radiyallahu ta'ala reported that rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once delivered a khutbah from dawn until sunset in which he mentioned all the major events that would take place between then and qiyama rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a khutbah and huzaifa ibn yaman radiyallahu ta'ala and the secret keeper of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he narrates this from dawn until sunset rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exposed every single occurrence that will happen from his time until the day of resurrection and thereafter huzaifa radiyallahu ta'ala states he says sometimes we forgot parts of that khutbah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until we saw those events unfold before our very eyes this is how much he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam communicated to his ashab communicated to his ashab with regards to what is going to transpire this is our habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam do you know what is the aim apart from teaching you about rasulullah and you know cementing in our hearts love for the messenger of allah the aim is that we can hold our heads high and say that this is our nabi this is the deen that we follow because our rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam no one up to today can deny his nubuwa and we have seen it brothers in islam the past few days discussing what non muslims non muslims have to say about the habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking about his sirah talking about the sirah of the habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his sirah and his life being a, 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 a you know solution to modern day problems george bernard shaw one of the great philosophers of the modern era do you know what he said 
if a man like Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, the leadership of the modern world, he would succeed in solving all of its problems. Non-Muslims, non-Muslims have seen the greatness of the Habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Is it not time that we lift our heads and be proud and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa taala that we are from the ummah of His Habib? Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Another prophecy made by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this prophecy is especially with regards to the time that we are living in today. Sayyidina Mikdam ibn Ma'ad al-Qarib radiyallahu ta'ala and reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Indeed I have been given the Qur'an and something similar along with the Qur'an. But soon, soon, there will come a time where a man will be reclining on his couch with a full stomach and he will say, you should only adhere to this Qur'an. What you find it deeming permissible, consider it permissible. What you find it deeming forbidden, consider it forbidden. But indeed, whatever the messenger of Allah forbids is like what Allah forbids. And this prophecy of the messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has come into fruition in our time. Today, we have groups, we have individuals that arise amongst us who attempt to delegitimize the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in order to avoid the definitive interpretation that it provides of the Qur'an. What do they call themselves? Quranists. What do they call themselves? Quranists. We have individuals in our own community that talk about only obeying the Qur'an, only following the Qur'an. We reject hadith, the narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And because they have rejected the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they have relied on English translations of the Qur'an, they have interpreted in their own way what salah is. Salah to them is not what we do. It's not what we do. Wudu to them is not what we do. They have reinterpreted the Qur'an to fit in with their wounds and desires. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam spoke about such a time. That individuals will come and tell you that kafi kitab Allah. That sufficient for you is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, sufficient for us is the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. That is sufficient for us. That we follow Allah and we follow the Habib of Allah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. How can we, we 1400 years later who rely on English translations of the Quran and English translations of narratives of, of seerah, of history, we, we are going to interpret the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are going to leave 1400 years of scholarship. This is what the fools of today are calling us to, that we should leave 1400 years of scholarship to follow their interpretation of Islam. Arrogance. I don't call, regard it as arrogance. I regard it as ignorance. Fools. Idiots. But this has already been foretold by the messenger. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. They after a, 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 another prophecy made by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you see the barefoot, naked shepherds of camels competing in the construction of high-rise buildings, then take it as this is from amongst the signs of the end of times. Allahu Akbar. When the Arabs of the desert, the Bedouins of the desert, 
the shepherds of the desert, when these individuals compete with each other with regards to construction of high-rise buildings, this is from amongst the signs of the end of times. The highest skyscraper is where? Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Who's competing with the Burj Khalifa now? Jeddah. They are building a tower that will be even higher than Burj Khalifa. You go to every single Arab nation today, people of the desert, and you'll see the desert transformed into metropolitan cities with skyscrapers. Everyone competing to have the biggest skyscraper. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 1400 years ago in a desert he made this prophecy. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said the hour will not commence before people boast of their masajid. In fact, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and added on and he said, you will ornament your masajid just as the Jews and Christians did with their temples. We spend millions with regards to the beautification of our masajid. And the masajids are empty. Apart from Salatul Jumu'ah, Salatul Eid, perhaps the month of Ramadan and Mubarak, and perhaps certain nights and days. Other than that, the masajid is empty. We build masjid that cost 50 million rand, 100 million rand, 200 million rand. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam prophesied and he said, by Allah, I do not fear poverty overtaking you, but I fear that you will have abundant wealth at your disposal like the nations before you, causing you to compete in it as they competed with it. This masjid has to be better than that masjid. We are competing with each other with regards to the building of masajid, making it extravagant, filled with luxury. Yes or no? We see it in our own hometown, brothers in Islam. And we have to. Why? Because our people want comfort. Our people want comfort. What was the masjid of Rasulullah? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have you read the description of Masjid al-Nabawi? Upon the floor of Masjid al-Nabawi, the greatest creations of Allah made sajda. Rasulullah himself, Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, Ali, Ashra al-Mubashirin bil Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated in hadith, one day made sajda in Masjid al-Nabawi, in his masjid, and it was raining. And the, the, the mud of the floor came out on the forehead of the Messenger of Allah. On the forehead of the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We want carpet that has padding underneath it. We want carpet that has padding underneath it. We want to be walking on cloud nine, making sajda on cloud nine. Yes or no? It's a reality, myself included. We want comfort. The comforts of the dunya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we spoke about this yesterday, the simplicity of the life of the Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The simplicity of the life of the Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. You will compete with each other with regards to wealth, with regards to showing off in the dunya. Sometimes, sometimes another masjid is not even required in a community. You go down the, the, the road, one masjid. You go down another road, another masjid. Another road, another masjid. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, this is not our purpose to build more and more masajid. Our purpose is to fill the masajid. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At one stage in the entirety of Madinah al-Munawwara, there was one masjid. 
And then thereafter, as it became overflowed, another masjid opened here, another masjid opened there, not in close proximity to each other. But we are competing with each other. We can build. One family has money, we will build the most beautiful masjid in Durban or in Johannesburg or in Cape Town. We have this mihrab, this mimbar. Of what value? Of what value? Does it matter? Does it matter where we put our head down to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It does not matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the entire earth has been made a masjid for you. The entire earth has been made a masjid for you, for you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We complain, acorn not working. It must come in the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is the worst month with regards to looking after a masjid. You know, the, the, the authorities of a masjid, when it comes to the month of Ramadan, they run away. They go and hide it. Because a man will come in the masjid, put the acorn on. We are feeling hot. We are feeling hot. And then another guy will complain, no, we're feeling cold. So we tell them we got two floors. The bottom we put the acorn on. If you want the acorn, you go down. If you don't want the acorn, come up. But then they complain, and we complain, and we complain. The sound is not good. Make it with a better echo. No, 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 it's too loud. Make it soft. Uh, the carpet is smelling. We can still smell the, 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 the sabusas on it. Complain, complain, complain. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, brothers in Islam, read the description of the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Read the description of the masjid of Rasulullah. Then he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam said, a time will come over the people when they will consume riba. The Sahabas asked him, Ya Rasulullah, all of them. He said, whoever does not consume it will still be reached by its dust. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is talking about our time. Whether it is for the purpose of purchasing a property or vehicle or simply for developing a credit score. Simply for developing a credit score. Today, interest-bearing clauses have permeated every dimension of contemporary financial dealings. And this has been prophesied by the Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. For example, the sheer amount of interest, brothers in Islam, in modern banking, it, it entangles us all. We are all involved in it. For instance, the deposit in our checking accounts are loaned by the bank to make it more money. Do you know this? And the bonuses we receive on credit card rewards are partly funded by the interest paid by other customers. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam prophesied about this 1400 years ago. A time will come where we will not be able to escape riba. Where we will not be able to escape interest. Take for instance a government. A government consistently runs a deficit. Why? Because in turn it's paid for with debt. If you have to look at our current financial system, it's a system that runs on riba. A system that runs on interest. And then we even have something which is called compound interest. And don't worry about the non-Muslims, mind you. We Muslims are involved in this. We Muslims are involved in this, in riba. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam saw beyond his time. And a time will come in the future where individuals will do all of this. 
The reason why he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave these prophecies is for us to learn from it. To better ourselves. To become better servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the aim. This is the maqsad. Thereafter, another prophecy made by the Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, with regards to what will emerge in future, women who have on clothing yet appear naked, walking with an enticing gait, with something on their heads that looks like the humps of camels, leading to one side, they will never enter Jannah or even smell its fragrance, although its fragrance can be detected from such and such distance. Rasulullah did not only describe their provocative dressing, he even described their hairstyles. Their hairstyles. Rasulullah thereafter even stated that my community, meaning the Muslims, would participate in some of these trends. And day after Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, listen, listen, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there will be in the end of my nation men who would ride chariots at the gates of the masajid who are wearing clothing yet naked who will drop off their women. Who will drop off their women. Upon their heads will be the likes of a lead camel's hump. We take our wives, we take our daughters to the masjid for a program, to the masjid for Miladun Nabi, to the masjid for the celebration of the Awliya Allah. But how are they dressed? How? Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam prophesied 1400 years ago that you men, you will ride upon what is known as chariots. Rasulullah is talking about modern day vehicles. You will ride to the masjid. We take our wives, we take our daughters. This style that they have with this hump at the back, This is in direct violation of the sunnah of our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, respected elders, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam foretold, prophesied Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala and talking about a hyper-sexualized culture. The time that we are living in today a hyper-sexualized culture. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fornication never becomes prevalent amongst a people to the degree that they practice it openly, except that Allah makes epidemics become rampant amongst them which has never existed with regards to their ancestors. Intercourse on the streets, readily available on your handheld devices. Children put it on the computers and the ads that come is what? We are living in a hyper-sexualized society as prophesied by the messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam prophesied all of this as a warning to his ummah. And he gave us the answers, the solutions, what we must do when we come in such a time, that when we appear in such a time. But the problem with us is we have gone away from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And what has that led to? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Su'ban radiallahu ta'ala reports that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
and listen to the hadith of my Habib. He said, nations will soon invite one another to destroy you. Just as people are invited around a table to partake in a dish of food. Nations will invite each other to destroy you. Look at what's happening in Palestine. In Gaza. So the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, will it be because of the small number that we will be on that day? Look at the Habib. No, rather you will be many on that day. But you will be like weightless foam, like the foam on the ocean. Weightless and useless. Two billion, two billion Muslims. We are a quarter of the world population as of this year. We have surpassed 2 billion. The population of the world is 8 billion. 2 billion makes it a quarter. A quarter of the world's population. And we cannot turn the tides of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And then Rasulullah said, You will be like the foam of the ocean. Allah will remove the fear of you from the hearts of your enemies and will cast weakness into your hearts. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, what is the reason for our weakness? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hub ad dunya, the love of the dunya, wa karahatul maut, and hatred for death. Hatred for death. And look at what's happening to the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Look at what's happening to the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Brothers in Islam, we really need to go back and follow in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a very, very important hadith of the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once my nation considers five things permissible, Destruction will befall them when they consider five things permissible. Number one, when cursing one another appears. When cursing one another appears. Today we curse each other. We slander each other. We insult each other. Facebook Instagram, YouTube is the new battleground. What is our aim in life? To take out the pants of our Muslim brothers, to expose their nakedness. We want to expose them. In Urdu we say take out their ijar. We want to take out everybody's ijar. That's the world that we are living today. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when wine is drunk, when silk is worn, when musical instruments are played, and then you know what was the first, what he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when men suffice themselves with men, with men and women suffice themselves with women. Few days ago, what happened in Cape Town? You received the SMS. What happened? Two Muslim girls got married. Two Muslim girls made nikah. Nikah. Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu ta'ala, once my nation considers five things permissible, destruction will befall them. And one of those, when men suffice themselves with men, and women suffice themselves with women, we are living in the time of the LGBTQ plus minus Y. The amount of letters added there, brothers in Islam. Huh? No, I identify, you identify as an idiot. 
Zamana we live in. You identify as an idiot. Nation, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam prophesied the time that we are living in today. Muslims today have adopted this agenda. We even have the imams. No, it's a reality. It's a reality. Gay imams. Lesbian imams. No, we subscribe to an open masjid. You subscribe to bloody jahalat. You subscribe into ignorance. Going against the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. You know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala and said, An age will surely come, telling about the Habib of Allah, An age will surely come when people gather and pray in the masjid whilst there is not a single believer amongst them. Allahu Akbar. Whilst there is not a single believer amongst them. You act in contrary to the, the, the laws of Allah, the sunnah of the Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, we are accepting what is wrong. No, you know, this is our people today. We show empathy. And this has been the, 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 the agenda. That's why they, it's in every, mo every movie, every series, to try and make us you know, feel sorry. Look at how they are suffering, living, you know, in a closet. So we feel sorry. You know, let people be. Let them live their life. It's between them and their creator. So where is Al-Amr bin Ma'roof and Nahi Anil Munkar? Enjoying what is right and forbidding what is evil. Where is that? Man does wrong, we allow him to do wrong. Woman does wrong, we allow them to do wrong. This disease has spread to our children. This disease has spread to our children. Do not be surprised that in a few years it will be even haram for me to talk about these matters. Because I will be sued. And that's the reality of the dunya that we are living in today. To snatch away at our iman, to snatch away people are taking away the modesty of the dunya, of the people of the dunya. And Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has already prophesied all of this. The times that we will live in. And wallahi, these are proofs of the, 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 the validity of the nubuwa of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And another prophecy that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they will never cease to be a group from my ummah victorious upon haqq, unharmed by those who will oppose them until the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to pass. So many religions have come and gone. So many time periods have come and gone. But alhamdulillah, the ummah of the Habib is immortal. And it will be so until the day of resurrection when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will always be in the Ummah, individuals who will stand up for Haq, who will stand up for the sake of the Qur'an, to promote the laws of Allah mentioned in the Qur'an, and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And the last prophecy that we will discuss today, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, by the one in whose hand is my soul, the hour will not commence until predators speak to people and until the tip of a man's whip and the straps on his saddles speak to him and his tie informs him of what occurred with his family and what he left. أو كما قال الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. These prophecies were made in the seventh century by a man who lived in the desert, but with the incredible strides that we have made with regards to electricity and electronics and you know science today with modernization, 
What do we find today? A Japanese toy maker is showcased for creating a translator that is able to interpret what dogs are saying. Are able to interpret what dogs are saying. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The hour will not commence until predators speak to people. It was done in the year 2002. A Japanese toy maker made this interpreter for a dog. That a dog, we were able to understand it, say such phrases like, I can't stand it, how boring, and I am lonely. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 1400 years ago, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, talks about these matters, brothers in Islam. In another narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, a time will come where people will have musical instruments on their heads. Who would have thought 1400 years later you would find a man walking around with a guitar or a drum on his head? No, we have today what is known as the earphones. Where music thumps into our ears. Where we sit in a masjid and we have music. Where we are reading the Quran and there's music. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam prophesied such a time. If your ringtone, my respected elders, is a music song, I request to you make it a ring ring. Serves the same purpose. But this is all from the prophecy of the Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. This is all from the prophecy of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another narration, a time will come where information is relayed to your homes on a vertical map. On a, sorry, on a vertical uh, mat. Tum, tum, TVs that we have today. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another narration talks about muasalat. He talks about atbaq, he talks about a dish that will relay information to your homes. We have the satellite in the skies today. This is your Habib and my Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wallahi we are upon the deen of haqq. Our Nabi is haqq. Everything about this deen is haq. Knowing that everything is haq, when are now we going to start following haq? Following Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Brothers in Islam, learn your deen. Learn your deen. Inshallah, tomorrow we proceed with the next uh, proof of the proofs of the of the nubuwa of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his message, and thereafter we proceed to the Quran and the accomplishments of the Messenger sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam. Do join us to increase yourself in knowledge with regards to Rasulullah sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for forgiveness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. My respected elders, we are living in a time that the Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said is an age of fitan. It's an age of fitna. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said with regards to living in such a time, let your homes be spacious for you. Let your homes be spacious for you. In other words, spend as much time as possible in your home. Safeguard yourselves. Safeguard the members of your family. Safeguard your sons and your daughters. When you see them leaving your home, dressed in clothing that exposes their aura, dressed in clothing that is provocative, Wallahi, give them guidance. Correct them. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Not only our daughters but our sons as well. The pants that we are wearing today, that tight 
tight pants that you cannot even make sajda with. Change those pants. I'm making an appeal to you. You are acting in contrary to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where is the modesty? Where is the modesty? When the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not cut your, 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 your hair in two lengths, where is following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam? When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to our women folk, do not wear enticing clothing, where is us following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Where is the hijab? Where is haya? Where is the following of the sunnah of the Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam? You youngsters, you youngsters are the future of this ummah. You are the, the, the future taking forward the message of Islam to the next generation. And this is how the message is carried forward and carried forward. Where are you in following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam? Do not worry about fashion sense and what the world will think about you that you know you have to keep up with the Joneses. No! Worry about what Allah and his Habib think about you. Not what us human beings think about you. That does not matter. Let us change. We claim to be Ashike Rasul. Uh, we all claim we all Ashike Rasul. Uh, we are people who you know celebrate his Milad. We are people who read Salami. That is not Ashike Rasul. You know what is Ashike Rasul? When you follow the Sunnah of the Rasul. صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم إن خير كلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة أو كما قال الحبيب المصطفى وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين والحمد لله والحمد لله والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله